Welcome back into the show. I'm Brian Keating alongside Carson Cunningham. It is time. Let's crash the boards. To crash the boards on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, we've already done this once tonight. Talked about the NCAA tournament and the big Cowboys dance, yeah. going back to the big dance. Um, how about the Thunder who, you know, Oof. Last right. weekend, they, they, <laughs> they lost four in a row, and the sky has fallen. They're losing to bad teams. You turn around, they beat the Spurs and Jazz in back-to-back -back ball games. Maybe the sky has arisen from the ground again. What would you think? What a difference a week makes. In right? The NBA, right, it one, does. One minute, they're the greatest thing ever. Next week, <laughs> no. they can't play dead. I know. Uh, it, it was frightening how they had lost to three of the worst teams in the entire NBA. Yeah. But the big difference is they played in Oklahoma City. I mean, they that's, by that's far. A great point. They have the biggest difference in the entire NBA between road and home records. They are a completely different team at home. There's reasons for that. Role players typically play better at home. We've seen that. And obviously Russell Westbrook was off the charts lately. But, you know, they have, they're really good at home, Brian, and they can beat anybody there. So, obviously, it helps being back at the peak. Not so defenseless. Did I spell that right? Does defenseless have a second E? Yes. Did, okay. So, not so defenseless. Google is your friend, <laughs> my friend. I don't have it right now. Uh, here's the deal. In those four losses against uh, the Blazers, Suns, and Mavericks, they allowed 115 points a game. Their last two wins, they allowed 98 points a game. It gives you a lot better chance to win. I thought their energy and effort was tremendous. I thought they played with... Uh, I thought they played with a, a spirit that we hadn't hadn't seen in a couple of games. I will say this, the other guys, and I always say the Thunder others, because you know what you're going to get from Russell Westbrook. Against the Utah Jazz, Oladipo had 22, Taj Gibson had 15, Steven Adams finally played well, had 11 points, and Dennis Cantor had 16. When you get those guys all around Russell Westbrook playing pretty well, Thunder are pretty good. Well, and I think we overlooked the fact, between Ennis Cantor and Victor Oladipo, they've missed 25 games yep, this year. Yep. They have both those guys back. That makes a huge difference. I love. I we tend to overlook that yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Victor Oladipo very aggressive oh. as well in the last two games. When he's aggressive, man, he's running things out of pick and roll. He's getting to the rim. That's the Victor Oladipo that we've wanted to see throughout most of the season. So maybe he's sort of figuring out a way to do that. It kind of helps having your second leading scorer, doesn't it? No, it does. He made a yes, big difference. He made a big difference. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the Thunder win two games in a row. But um, I mean, look, lo and behold, Russell Westbrook gets his 32nd triple-double of the season. He passes Wilt Chamberlain now. He's second all-time with 32 triple-doubles in a season. Um, he's nine behind Oscar Robertson, who had 41 in 1961 and 1962. You and I try to, every show, kind of remind people what this guy's doing, try and put it into context. It's hard, but it has to be done, because what we're seeing here, you know, Oscar Robertson is really on the NBA Mount Rushmore for averaging a triple-double in a single season. No question. It's off the charts. It's st we're still talking about it 50 years later. Russ is inching closer to that mark, and it's even more impressive to me, Brian. That he's Russ Moore. Mount Russ Moore. I like that. It's good. I was wondering if you catch that. No, I like that. It's even more impressive for me he's doing it in this day and age, Brian. He's playing less minutes than Oscar, far fewer possessions, and still he's probably going to average triple. I don't know if he's going to get to the, the record or not. It's just he's put himself in the NBA hierarchy for good. He's averaging a triple-double. That's hard. You're right. We, do, like, we need to sit, or, sit back and say, this isn't normal. <laughs> like, I know that the Thunder, uh, they've been really good since basically the day they showed up here. And we've seen Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant do some asinine things <laughs> over the years. Yeah. This is maybe as asinine as any of them. This isn't normal. It hadn't happened in 50 years. And you can tell me all you want and say the Thunder are going to be the whatever seed they're going to be, and that's not going to be as good as the Rockets or it's not going to be as good as the Spurs. And so-and-so else ought to be the MVP. That's just not right. Russell Westbrook is the MVP for what he's done with this team. With a brand new roster, you lose a super duper superstar off of a team. When the Cavs did that, they got the number one pick when LeBron left. They got it twice. When the, when the Orlando Magic lost Shaquille O'Neal, they got the number one pick two times. Russell Westbrook's going to get him into the playoffs. He has been superhuman at times. And he is the MVP. Don't tell me anything else. And all you need to know is they're 26 and 6 when he gets a triple double. It's not as if he's just Piling stat stats, mongering. Right, right. He's helping his team win. When he doesn't get one, they, they usually lose. lose. They're 11 and 23. Right. There's a reason he gets these triple doubles. They have to have them. Right. Um, MVP I mean, for sure. Yeah, no question. I brought up seed. As as we get close to the plus, what we got? Like 25 games left? What, they played 65 games? Okay, so 17 games left. Yeah. 17 games left uh, before the end of the regular season. Which seed do you think the Thunder will be? 
I know it's enticing with the Warriors banged up. You've mentioned it. Kevin Durant's hurt. Would you rather be the, the seven or the eight with Kevin Durant? The, Who knows? the Spurs. The Marcus Spurs. Aldridge has a heart problem. You don't know when he's coming don't back. Know. I don't think you want any part of that. <laughs> six, six marks the spot because I think they're going to end up in the six two. I think that's where you want to be as well because you'll you'll play Houston. Look, I know if Houston hits their threes, you basically have no shot. But I just look at the matchups this season. They're one and two against them. But their two losses by a combined five points. Yeah, they can play Houston. Games. And the Thunder's roster is much better now after the trade deadline than it was Houston's then. Houston's is better, too. It, Houston, they got Lou Williams, right. another Houston's guy who can shoot the lights out. Houston's They're going to have to play some too. defense, which they've had trouble with that you mentioned. Yeah. But I'd much rather play the Rockets than the Spurs or the Warriors. I think, and plus, I think they end up at six. I, I think they'll end up six. Um, and I, I, I think that's probably where you want to be. But I will say, if well, none Ke- of it's fun. No, but if Kevin Durant's not healthy, the Warriors are, I think, two and four without Kevin Durant. They've struggled. If Lamarcus Aldridge isn't healthy with the Spurs, but you can't count on that. You have no idea how Kevin's that's going to Kevin's supposed to be back, and you don't supposed know when Aldridge's coming back. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to be the sixth seed. I think it's going to be a fantastic series with the Houston Rockets, and it'll be fun going down to H-Town. We've been to H-Town quite a bit lately. Let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> uh, should be fun. Thunder, 17 games to go till the end of the regular Home season. Yeah. He's Carson. I'm Brian. That's Crashing the Boards.